last year I got to see a lot of places I'd never seen before. That was cool. And uh, I got to meet a lot of people, unlike people I'd met in the past. And I, I got to experience playing shows in front of a lot, of, a lot more people than normal. And I also just had crazy adventures everywhere I went. And uh, I felt really lucky that we had, you know, we had a record label with resources that could get us, you know, to travel and get us heard. You know, there were a couple shows where, where I'd be sort of like staring off into space or thinking while we were performing and I'd notice people like singing along to the lyrics. And it was really, it was really cool and really powerful to see people singing along and see that people knew the songs. Because those were song, all the songs were thing really personal, and it's cool that something that's really personal can, to me can be really personal to someone else. You know, like yeah, it's cool when you get a bunch of Facebook likes, or you get a bunch of YouTube plays, or you get put on some major website. But that actually doesn't mean anything. Um, you know, if the internet shuts down, we're all still alive. You know, if the world shuts down, well then there is nothing. In the past, in the music industry, there hasn't been equal opportunity for all artists. And, there, you know, some people get chosen or some people have connections or some people live in Hollywood or you have to live in New York in order to be a successful artist or a successful musician. But, you know, with social media, everybody, I think, has more equal opportunity. Not saying that everyone does because everyone definitely doesn't. You know, the Internet allow people to, uh, to share their music with the world. You can just post a song on the internet, just push a button, and all of a sudden everybody in the world could maybe hear your song. Not everyone in the world, obviously. A lot of people still don't have the internet, but uh, the people of the internet. <laughs> I was in Tacoma, where I'm, Tacoma, Washington, and there's this, there's this uh, huge mile-long stretch beneath a freeway uh, called the Underworld. It's where a lot of people go to like spray paint and you know put up graffiti and uh, I saw this one really s pathetic sad looking graffiti that just said Natalja <laughs> and it looked like some you know like meth addict or something was like you know making some attempt at spray painting nostalgia and just forgot the S and looked at it when they were done and was like man I forgot the S and I just thought that was a really desolate sad feeling I've experienced a lot of, you know, darkness and desolate feelings in the past year, um, and it was it just is what those songs are related to, and the way that I felt. So it's called nostalgia. I had a friend pass away recently, and I had this crazy my my roommate, and I had this crazy, crazy wild experience where um, I, I found him dead at my apartment and it was really wild and crazy um, the two days after it happened and um, I was with a friend sitting in Washington Square Park and there was a man a piano man playing in the park and I just recorded this voice memo that was like I was like it's Sunday July 22nd and I'm, t I'm coming to terms with death and my friends like he's coming to terms with death and that's what the records about it's about coming to terms with with death and the fact that people die and that that little voice memo is at the end of the record and I I, uh, I think it's really cool that that um, I don't know I get an opportunity to, to share a moment like that with people he's coming to terms with death. I think with the last record people were were a little bit quick to write off the lyrics as saccharine or like simple but really you know I was deliberately making them I was simplifying the feelings I had, and in Natalja, the, f the feelings aren't simplified. They're articulated in a way that's as complex as the feelings are themselves, I think. 